Okay, is it straight? Yes. One, two, three. I told my friends, guys, there won't be any war. We will leave, we will finish school and all will be fine. I was very optimistic. On February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded the neighboring country of Ukraine. In the months that followed, the Ukrainian people put up a fierce resistance. Ukrainian civilians joined the military in the fight against the much larger Russian forces. The cost of that resistance has been enormous. The war has killed tens of thousands, including thousands of Ukrainian civilians. It's reduced thriving communities to rubble and it's prompted the worst refugee crisis since World War II, with millions of Ukrainians fleeing into Poland, Hungary, and beyond. In May 2022, we spoke to four Ukrainian teens who fled to Poland about how the war has impacted their lives. Here are their stories. Before the war started, I didn't like Ukraine so much. But now I understand that Ukraine is very important to me. I always wanted to go to Poland. I'm here now. I've been living here for over two months. But I'm not a tourist. I'm a refugee. And that makes a big difference. Being in a war is like being in a fog. When you are in a war, you do not feel many things. You understand that while you sleep, you can instantly die because of an explosion. And you are not afraid because in the situation it is normal. I woke up in the morning on the 21st of February. I was sleeping under the window and saw that the sky was red. A few seconds later, I heard a boom. It was an explosion. My phone was filled with text messages. It was 5.23 a.m. The war had started. I woke up, made some tea, got dressed. When I came into my parents' room, the TV was on. I said to my father, we have to go to school, I am going to be late. But my father said, nobody will go to school today, because the war has started. And then something happened in my heart. I understood that this was something very serious, which would separate my life in two, before and after the war. It was terrible. First, we decided that I would go to school because my school has a bunker and we saw that it was safer. But all the schools were closing. We didn't know what to do. On the 1st of March, my friend left his house. He came under fire and was hit by bomb fragments. My classmates and I were very shocked because we didn't believe that it could happen to one of our friends. He died in the hospital and we realized for the first time that this was no joke. This was a big, horrible war. By the 5th of March, everything was cut off. The lights, the water, the communication, everything but the gas. There were so many explosions. We headed to the basement to try to survive. It was my dad's birthday. Bombs were falling from Russian planes and we understood that our house could be next. Russia bombed the railway station in Kramatorsk. My classmate was there and she died. For all of my friends, all of my classmates, it was horrible. Many of them started panicking. We didn't know what to do because evacuation isn't safe and staying isn't safe. Anything you do is playing with death.
On February 26, my mother called from work and said, Stay calm, but please, pack a backpack for yourself and your brother, with everything you need the most. I started crying. My sister looked at me and said, what happened? And I said, we are going to Poland. How can you put your whole life into one backpack? My father decided we are going to Warsaw. He was scared about our future. We packed our bags very fast, jumped into our car and my father drove us to the border. I didn't want to leave, but it didn't matter. We left Mariupol on the 15th of March. The situation was getting worse and worse every day. On the one hand, we understood that we can die in the next hour, even the next minute. But on the other hand, it was very risky to leave. Bombs had fallen near our yard. The blast cracked the car windshield right down the middle. And we thought the whole car would be next. That's when we decided to leave. My mother was crying. I was praying. My little brother was praying and crying. As we drove, I saw burnt houses, burnt military vehicles, dead people on the streets. It was horrible. My dad stayed behind. I expected to live in the basement for at least a few weeks. But my father said in one hour an evacuation train is arriving. I quickly repacked my things and was ready to evacuate. When our train arrived in Kharkiv railway station, I heard 10 explosions in one second. Some people who weren't able to get on the train were hitting it with stones and with their hands. They were crying. I looked out the window. People were running from side to side and screaming. Dogs were running through the railway station without people. The train was full, people were sitting on the floor and in the corridor. We took two mothers and two children into our car and two cats in bags. People were angry, tired and afraid about their future. After 56 hours we arrived in Warsaw and met my sister. My father stayed in Konstantinivka. He is living in our home right now with our dog Tepi. Dad drove us to the border and left. He said, I'm sorry for everything. If something would happen, remember that I love you all. I said to him, don't say that. I don't want to hear it. Because in one, two or three weeks, we will come back home and everything will be fine. But soon, it will be three months. And I'm still here. I'm living with my mother, brother and sister in one room. I don't know where we'll be next month or even the next two weeks. Now I'm living in Warsaw, in Poland. People ask me, where are you from? I tell them that I'm from Mariupol and they look at me with eyes full of pain. They understand that you can't go back home because there is no city left. The city is destroyed. When I came to Poland, I was very scared. It was a shock for us. But Polish people are so good, they wanted to help us. They gave my mother a good job, they gave us clothes, gave us a flat, everything. I'm very grateful. The hardest thing about being a refugee is simply the fact that I am a refugee. I never thought that I would ask someone to give me something, need to ask. It's so strange when someone says refugees from Ukraine. I think that is not about me. In my head, I keep repeating, I am not a refugee. But I know that I am a refugee. And that is the worst. This is not my home. This is not my life. I miss my friends. I just want to go home. I 
hope the war will finish with our victory. Now my father is fighting in the war, and when I ask what will happen, he said he doesn't know. It's okay now, but what will happen in five minutes? I don't know. You see your family dying, your friends dying, everything that you had destroyed in one day, it's like a plague. And the normal reaction is a growing horrible hate. After the war, you would be in a broken world. And this broken, destroyed world requires kindness. You have to defend the kindness inside you. War has the ability to end, and at the end of the war, life will grow again. Dear friends, we all know Svetoslava Karchuk's song, Everything Will Be Fine. Все буде добре. Everything will be good for each of us. Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine!